What's going on gaming news? Mystic Nightmare here and I am bringing you a beginner's tutorial as well as an advanced tutorial on how to set up your rod, your reel, your line, and your leader to ensure that you never break your reel or your rod. Now, the begin beginner's tutorial is going to have three different versions to it. The advanced tutori tutorial is going to talk about the reels in depthly and is going to show you why sometimes your line will actually be a higher load capacity than your reels drag weight. Let's get started. Okay, so to start off with, I know some of you guys were expecting a Volkov video, but when I started doing the video, I ended up realizing that this tutorial needed to be made first to show you guys an advanced tutorial on setting up your rod and reel so you could utilize them at Quarry Lake, which is where we're at now, as well as Volkov River. And I figured since I'm doing an advanced tutorial, I might as well just do a beginner's tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. To, first, to, to start off with, let's do the beginner's tutorial. And this is your overall basic starter uh, setup. It's a formula that's very easy to remember. Basically, when you open up your inventory and you click on one of your rods that's already set up, it's kind of like a, a top-down list. You've got your rod at the top, you've got your reel at number two, you've got your line at number three, and then you've got your leader at number four. It basically follows that formula, okay? So the way that it goes is, is your rod's load capacity is going to be the highest out of all of them. Next down the list is going to be your reels max drag, which is going to be next highest. So second to the highest. Then the third one is going to be your lines load capacity, which is going to be third from the highest. And then the last one is going to be your leaders load capacity, which is going to be the very last or the lowest load capacity. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to create a chain in all of these compo components. Now, what happens when the weakest, the weakest link of the chain breaks? It's basically going to be your load capacity that is the lowest that is going to break. So in this chain, you've got your leader, you've got your line, you've got your reel, and you've got your rod which is the lowest load capacity, basically it's going to be your leader. So if you screw up, if you max out your tension bar while fighting a fish, if you get spooled, whatever the reason, if something breaks, it's going to be your leader first, okay? And when you lose your leader, you're going to lose your leader, you're going to lose your hook, and you're going to lose your bait, or you'll lose your lure if you're spinner fishing, okay? So that's basically all it is, so highest uh, the highest kilograms is going to be your load capacity in your rod. Next down is going to be your max drag uh, for your reel. And then the next down is going to be your load capacity for your line. And the next one and the last one finally is going to be your load capacity for your leader. Now I said in the starting of this video that there's going to be three versions of this. So this is the very basic setup right here, okay? The second version is actually going to be about spinner fishing. Now with spinner fishing, it's a little bit different because when you get to spinner fishing, your leader is very important. If you're going for pike, just pike or perch, then you can use a still leader and you can have a very low still leader kilogram load capacity. Meaning you could probably start out at a beginner area around 3.2 kilograms and you'll be absolutely fine with that load capacity on a steel leader. However, I want to catch fish other than pike and perch. And to do that, you can't have a steel leader because the fish are line sensitive, meaning they're scared of steel leaders. So you want to have an invisible leader. The problem with a floral carbon invisible leader, which is one of your best invisible leaders, is that pikes can bite through it like candy. No problem whatsoever. They're going to take your lure and then you're going to be screwed. So to fix that, we still want to make sure that our leader is invisible, but we also want to make sure that our leader is thick enough or heavy enough to prevent pike from biting through it. So this is the second version in the setup where this is your 
fluorocarbon leader that is a very thick leader because it's a 6.2 kilograms. I wouldn't go above 6.4 kilograms. Now this type of a setup, as you can see, I have my uh, load capacity on my rod at 4.4 kilograms. I have my uh, reel at four kilograms, which is below my rod. So everything's the same. And then I have my line at 3.5 kilograms. Again, still the same. But now I have my leader at 6.2 kilograms because it's a floral carbon leader. And I want to make sure it's thick enough that pike can't bite through it. So in this type of a scenario, your leader is no longer going to be the weakest link in your chain. It's going to be your line. Now you need to be careful about this because one, if your line breaks, you're going to lose your leader and you're going to lose your lure, but that's not really the super important part. The super important part is depending on how much line that you have out, when that line breaks, you're going to lose some of your length. So if you get completely spooled, you're going to lose a lot of length. So you need to keep an eye on this type of scenario and your spool of line because eventually you might run out of length when it comes down to your line. I've actually done this. I've been completely spooled and I've lost close to 50 to 100 meters on one spool alone and that spool at that point was completely useless to me and I ended up just throwing it away. Okay, so your third scenario is a very strange oddball scenario. This scenario is only used for Belaya River, period. Okay, there's no other river or lake that I've actually had to deal with this type of a scenario. And what it comes down to is it comes down to your rod is going to be a super low load capacity. Now, this is only done on Balaya River because the Balaya River spinners that you use out there are going to be super light. As you can see, it's only a mass of 3.53. Okay, so that's a super light spinner and you want to throw that spinner as far as possible. And to do that, you need a very light reel, either an ultra light or a regular light reel. And it has to have a test of between two to 10. Okay, so one of the beginner rods, you can either use the old spinning rod, which is, has a test between two to 10, or you can use the Corona rod, which is a test between two to 10. But because you're using such a light rod, it's going to be your weakest load capacity. So in this type of scenario, my reel automatically, the lowest reel is already at three kilograms. Okay, so it's already over the load capacity of my rod. My line is at 3.5 kilograms. It is over the load capacity of my rod. And my fluorocarbon leader, because I want to make sure that I'm safe against pikes, I can either use a 3.2 kilogram, a 5.4 kilogram, or a 6.2, even a 6.4 kilogram. I highly suggest not going above a 6.4 kilogram because then you're getting a line that's too, or a leader that's too thick. Uh, and some of the fish will stop biting because it's too thick of a leader. But I've used all the way up until six, up, up to 6.4 kilograms and I was completely fine at that point. So I suggest not going above 6.4 kilograms on this. But as you can see at 6.4 kilograms, I'm way above my load capacity of my rod. Like I said, this is only a scenario used for Belaya River. The weakest point of this scenario is going to be your rod. It's a very good thing that these rods are dirt cheap because if you accidentally break one, it's only 18 silver to replace it. If you decided to use the old spinning rod, it's the exact same situation. However, this is only a two kilogram load capacity and every hour in real life or every game day, you can get a free one if you break this rod. Okay, so this is the third scenario and it's only used for Belaya River. You're not gonna pretty much not gonna use this anywhere in other, any other lakes. You may start getting into it when it comes down to ultralight setups, but the fact of the matter is that's a an completely entirely different video and we're not gonna cover that. Okay, so let's talk about the advanced setup. Now, when it comes down to the advanced setup, this can be a little confusing for newer players. However, you need to switch over to this type of setup when you get into quarry or when you get into Volkov River. It's very important to do this. This way, it'll allow you to have a higher tested line or a higher load capacity line without having to get super high uh, max drag weight reels, okay? So to be able to do this, I need to kind of explain to you about 
the reels and how in depth they actually get. So you can actually understand why we do this setup the way we do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Beluga Narga off. Okay. And I'm going to switch over to this, this one right here. Now this setup is almost exactly the same as our very first setup that I talked about in the beginner. Uh, in the beginner version, okay? However, as you can see, my line capacity or my line load capacity is higher than my max drag weight on my reel, okay? As well as the load capacity of my leader is higher on, higher than the max drag weight of my reel. That's because we are no longer using the max drag weight of the reel to figure out what our line capacity is going to be. We're actually using a hidden attribute in the game and it's for the reels only and it's called a mech weight limit, okay? A mech weight limit. And basically that has to do with the mechanics that are prone to be broken in your reel when you screw up and you max out your tension line. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about so it's a little bit easier for you guys to understand. So if we jump over to the workshop, I'm gonna go down to the Beluga Narga like I'm going to repair it. As you can see, all of these components are actually inside your reel. You've got your grease, your spool, your friction brake, your ball bearings, and your mechanism, okay? Your friction brake has to do with your max drag weight. So if I go into I and I go into here, your friction brake has to do with your max drag right here. Okay, so 14.5. Was I able to see that in here? Because that would make it a lot easier. Yes, I was. So your friction brake has to do with this max drag right here. That basically tells you how many, how much weight that weight of friction or weight of resistance that you are putting on the fish when you're fighting a fish. That has to do with your, where did my break go? That has to do with your friction break and that has to do with your mag, max drag, okay? Now, this right here is your mechanism. Now your mechanism is basically all of your mechanics that are inside the reel. So if your reel is going to break, it's going to be more than likely your mechanism. When you max out your tension bar, when you get spooled, when you accidentally lock your reel, when you purposely lock your reel thinking you can do that, what's going to break more than likely is going to be your mechanism, okay? Now this mechanism has a weight limit capacity, meaning if you go over that weight limit, then you are going to break your mechanism and you're going to have to repair your reel. Now, I don't feel like, uh, I shouldn't have to explain this, but I'm going to have to because I know what's gonna happen. You're gonna get into a chat, people are gonna start talking and then you're, they're gonna confuse you because they're gonna be calling one thing max drag and they're going to give you a number on max drag and then you're going to call another thing a max rated drag they're mislabeling in my opinion they're mislabeling the mechanism name okay so the friction break has to do with your max drag once your friction brake locks, when you intentionally lock your reel, it has nothing to do with your friction brake anymore. It has nothing to do with your max drag anymore. Okay, it all has to do with your mechanism and your mechanisms or your, yeah, your mechanism's weight capacity. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it mech weight from now on so you guys don't get, get confused. But when you're in chat, people have started mislabeling this and they've started calling this your real max, max weight limit or your ma real max drag or they'll call it your hidden max drag. This has nothing to do with drag in my opinion. So people are kind of calling it the wrong thing. It's your mechanism's weight limit capacity or your mech weight. Your mech weight is now what we're going to be using to determine what your line capacity is going to be, okay? We're no longer gonna be using your max drag, which has to do with your friction brake. We're going to do the mech weight limit, all right? So 
That being said, let's get to a pretty area we can look out here because you're only going to see it for about a second and then we're going to go into the inventory. Now, because we're using our mech weight on here, instead of having a max drag that's or a line load capacity that is below the max drag, we're now using the mech weight to figure out our li our load capacity for our line. The Beluga Nargis hidden mech weight, and if I didn't mention that before, every one of the reels mech weights are hidden. I don't know why the devs haven't put this in the game yet so we can see it, because they know that everybody is now setting up their lines uh, based off of the mech weight now. So hopefully they smarten up one of these days and they actually put it in the game on the list right here. But as of right now, they're all hidden. I'm going to put a link in the description below letting you guys know uh, that you can go to a spreadsheet that a gentleman called Kilted Jock, I think is what it is, something like that. He has a spreadsheet up which has a lot of the reels mech weights on it. And he actually mislabels it too. He calls it the Mac, max drag. And it's just, I'll explain it to you. I'll show you to you in a minute. So we're going to go by the Beluga Nargis hidden mech weight. The Beluga Nargis hidden mech weight is 44.5 kilograms. That is a huge fish or a very strong fish that this Beluga Nargis mech weight can handle before it breaks. Literally a 44.5 kilogram fish would have to be on your line to be able to break your Beluga Narga mechanics, okay? So instead of using their max drag, we're using the mech weight to figure out our load capacity of our line. And since our load capacity on the Beluga Narga is 44.5 kilograms, then we're now up to 28 kilograms load capacity, which is why we're above the max drag of our Beluga Narga. However, I am using a Super Duty spinning rod, which has a 30 kilogram load capacity. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your load capacity of your rod is above your load capacity of your line. And you want to make sure that your reels hidden mech weight is above your load capacity of your line. As you can see, our load capacity is 28 kilograms, which is definitely below the Beluga Narga's 44.5 kilogram mech weight. And it is also below the load capacity of the Super Duty rod. If I wanted to, I could get a even higher kilogram rod like a 40 kilogram rod, a 42 kilogram rod, and I would still be fine because the load capacity of my line can go all the way up to like 42 kilograms because the Beluga Narga's hidden mech weight is 44.5 kilograms. So I can still go even higher with this if I decided to get a higher, uh, higher load capacity uh, rod, okay? Now, when it comes down to floral carbon liters, as you can see, I'm at a 28.2 kilogram. So I'm still under the mech weight of the Beluga Narga, and I'm still under the load capacity of the rod with this floral carbon liter. And I've decided to use this because when you go to Volkov River, they have ginormous pikes there, up to 14 kilograms, huge pikes there, okay? So they can take off, I've, I've seen them take off a 21 kilogram um, floral carbon leader before. All right, so that's why I'm use, using such a huge kilogram uh, floral carbon leader to ensure that those pikes don't bite those, don't bite these expensive lures and, and wobblers that I have off of my line and I can still actually catch a really big pike and maybe get a trophy for the pike. But I can also catch all of the other fish there because I have a fluorocarbon leader that's invisible in water. So that's why you'll see a lot of people who utilize like spinner and trolling setups for Quarry Lake as well as for, um, for uh, uh, Volkov 
in this type of a fashion, their line, their line's load capacity is above their actual max drag of their reel. And that's okay because it's still below the mech weight of your reel. And hopefully I didn't stutter and stumble over myself too much and you guys can understand these type of setups. Because as long as your line and your leader is below the mech weight of your reel and your rod, then you're gonna be absolutely fine. And these two will still be your shield or your weakest link in the connection of all of these. So what's gonna break first? One of these two will break first, plain and simple. Now, just a heads up, if you finished watching this advanced tutorial and you're a beginner, do not use this type of setup for a beginner rod. If you do, you will break your reel like it was nothing. And this is why. When I go over to here to the tackle shop and I go into reels, when you first start out as a beginner, these reels, all of these beginner reels all have the exact same mech weight as the drag weight. Okay, so if you've got a three kilogram drag weight here, you've got a three kilogram mech weight. If you've got a 4.5 uh, 4, uh, kilogram mech weight here, uh, or I'm sorry, drag weight, if you've got a 4.5 drag weight here, then you've got a 4.5 mech weight. They don't really start going higher in their mech weight until you start getting up into the Sputniks and stuff like that. So with the Adriatica, I believe that one is at 11 kilograms mech weight. So as you can see, mech weight max on this one is 7.5 and the max on it uh, for the, I'm sorry, the drag weight on this is 7.5. The mech weight on it is 11. It's the same with the Element Pro. I believe the Element Pro's mech weight is 11 as well. So these first starter reels, don't use this advanced technique on these because you'll bust your reels. Okay, if you learned something or enjoyed the video, hit the like button, finger my bell, get notified when I put out a new video. Take care, have a good one, keep gaming, keep doing it at night, have a blast. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.